bring the light from the second grade for gravity to the midst of peace. Like a side of the panel, the blue characters, these can sometimes be found in small, still moments that we pause and listen. In a world where the thought can feel chaotic, in a world with every single aspect of our lives has been unending. God we want to feel your peace. God we trust that you are with us. So in peace among the people, even when it seems out of reach. Let us be faithful and turn to you in our hearts. Let us proclaim your faith to the ends of the earth. We have peace because God is with us. We like this panel of peace, the peace that Jesus our Savior gives to the world. Prepare then the way of the Lord. Sorry, light the candle. Hope is a star, number seven, verse, verse two. Verse two. Let's get up. It's not working. Everyone will social distance, 
You'll have a costume, you'll stay in, in one specific area. The people driving through in their cars to see it cannot get out of their cars, they cannot go near any of the animals, they just remain in their cars. So we will be very vigilant about, about social distancing, but we do need people to be the shepherds and to be the wise men and, and so on. So um, if you could help with that, we would appreciate it. If you have any floodlights you're not using this year, we'd love to hear from you as well. We need those, okay? There is a racial justice study action group that will commence on the 6th of January. It will begin on Zoom. It will be a sort of a monthly gathering, whether virtual or in person, depending on, on COVID. Uh, information about that is there. And if you're interested, the contact name, the Diane Remington, her email address and phone number are also there. Or I'm sure you could speak with, with Jeff as well if you uh, have some questions about it. But it sounds like a very you know, engaging opportunity to, to learn and to study. So I uh, do consider that. Again, it starts January the 6th. I think those are all the announcements that I have. Are there any from you this morning? If I missed anything. It is so good to see some boys and girls here this morning. We have five boys and girls with us this morning. So we're so happy to see you. Our opening carol. Carol sound the note of gladness. Number 28 in your hymn book. 28. Lord God, create pathways where there is no path. 
you prepare us to receive wonders beyond imagining. You have called us by name, baptized us with water and with the Holy Spirit. You bless us for abundant living and set us in the world to serve you. We are your people. And we worship you as our creator, our redeemer, and the breath of our lives, one God, now and always. Forgiving God, in this season of Advent, we welcome the coming of your light in a world that's filled with darkness. We confess to you the way in which we have added to that darkness, rather than obeyed your call to live as children in the light. We seek your forgiveness. We seek your forgiveness for times when we worship violence and belittle peace, for times when we fight amongst ourselves, for times when we forget that we are all children of God, for times when we do not stand up for the helpless among us. By your tender mercy, may the dawn from on high break upon us and give light to those of us that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death. May you guide us, guide our feet into the way of peace, now and always. Amen. Amen. Jesus said, Come to me, all of you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Friends, trust that peace and forgiveness are God's gifts to you this day. Be renewed by the power of the Holy Spirit that moves with you into each new day. And may the peace of Christ be with you all. I see Eva and George and Lana and Hillary and Audrey. It is so good to see you. There you are, popping up behind a few. And you had a really good day yesterday together. You did some gingerbread uh, decorating and some cupcake decorating, and you had a, just an awesome day, I understand. Are any of you afraid of the dark? Nobody's afraid of the dark. I used to be afraid of the dark. And in scripture, in chapter 14 of John, Jesus is talking to his disciples and letting them know that he has to, to go away. And they, they, they get scared. And Jesus says to them, I'm leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give you is not uh, of this world. It's not the gift that the world can give. So don't be troubled or don't be afraid. But remember what I told you, that I'm going away, but I will come back to you again. And when he leaves, he gives us the gift of his spirit. So the spirit is with us always. Well, I used to be afraid of the dark. So what my mom would do would be to leave my light on in my room until I'd fallen asleep. And then when she went to bed, she would turn the light up and it was all fine. Or another thing we can do if we're afraid sometimes. Do you have one of these in home? Eva has one. George, do you have one too? How do you have one? Lana, you have one? So I'm well, sometimes just something like the teddy bear just to comfort us also helps us not be afraid to, isn't it? It's a bit like having the, the Spirit of God with us. Just something to kind of comfort us and, and keep us company. Are you afraid of, of snakes? How about bugs? Any bugs? Bats? No! Oh my gosh. How about bikes? Can you climb a ladder? No, 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 go in there. Okay. How about uh, mice? No? Oh my goodness. Mm. How about bees? How about going to the dentist? You're not afraid. Oh my goodness. Boy, the boy. Well, when Jesus told his disciples that he was going away, he got a little afraid. And so he said, you know, I'll leave you my spirit with you that you need to not be afraid. And what do you recall what candle we just lit on our Advent wreath today, what it stood for? Anybody remember? It starts with a P. B A 
C, E. Sure. Peace, the candle of peace. And in the book of Isaiah, chapter 9, verse 6, this is the words. For I, to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. And that is Jesus that they're talking about. So Jesus, another name of Jesus, is our Prince of Peace. So he gives, gives us peace. So any time that we are afraid, we can think of him and his, his spirit, knowing that it brings us peace. Peace to reassure our hearts that we will be okay. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for your Holy Spirit who guides us and calms our fears. May we always feel the peace of your presence, especially in times when we are afraid. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. So good to see you. Our gospel lesson comes from this first chapter of Luke this morning, verses 39 through 45. This is when Mary and Elizabeth meet one another, and their lives have, have drastically changed. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, may your spirit surround us. May we feel the presence of your spirit among us. Speak to us your your message, your direction for our lives this day. Bless us all in this time. And may these thoughts and words and stories of our lives share bring glory to your name. In Christ we pray. Amen. Christmas can be such a such a tender time of year. Mary and Elizabeth meet and their lives have changed so much. Elizabeth, of course, was the wife of the priest Zachariah and the daughter of a family of priests. Elizabeth, a godly woman, a faithful follower of God, had been unable to, to bear children all her life and now she was in her older years. But God intervened, and she became pregnant. Not just her, but Mary as well. And when Mary goes to visit Elizabeth, amazing things happen to Elizabeth. She says the baby leaped in her womb. Not just, not just moved, but leaped. And when Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped, leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. She was filled by with the Holy Spirit, and so was the baby that was in her. The baby who later would be would baptized, would baptize the Son of God. Zechariah also was touched by what the angel said to him. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah, for your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you will name him John. You will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth, for he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He must never drink wine or strong drink, 
Even before his birth, he will be filled with the Holy Spirit. He will turn many of the people of Israel to the Lord their God. With the spirit and power of Elijah, he will go before him to turn the hearts of parents to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. So both Elizabeth and Zachariah's lives have been completely changed and God intervened. Elizabeth felt the touch of God's hand in her life and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? Elizabeth responds, saying, For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. For joy. And that child, of course, would go on to baptize the Son of God. The words of John in chapter 3 of Matthew, years later. I baptize you with water for repentance, for one who is more powerful than I is coming after me, and I am not worthy to carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor and will gather his wheat into the granary. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Isn't it true that sometimes we long, we long for some touch, maybe not quite the same touch that Mary and Elizabeth and Zechariah received, but some touch of, of God in our lives, just, just so we know in some way that, that we're real, and so that we know that God is, is real and, and cares for us. Other times, things happen in our lives that we cannot explain, and the only explanation is that it is God's touch. God's touch. Maybe something happened, someone was healed who, uh, you know, it, it wasn't expected. Some incident happens that can only be God's hand in it. You may recall the story of Helen Keller, born in 1880. And she became deaf and blind very early in her life. Well, in her younger years, the story is told that after Helen Keller's teacher, Anne Sullivan, had given her the names of physical objects in sign language, Miss Sullivan attempted to explain God. And she tapped out the symbols of the name God. Much to Miss Sullivan's surprise, Helen spelled back, thank you for telling me God's name, teacher, for he has touched me many times before. Helen Keller knew something of God's signature from nature, but up until that point, it had been wordless to her. And so often, with our ability to see and to hear and see what's going on around us, we become blind and deaf to, to God's touch. You know, we just sort of carry on, take it for granted. In this case, Helen was in tune with God's nature, but just had no words to, to put with it, to, to sign. Three people have responded to my invitation to share with us how God has has touched their lives, especially at this time of year. I share with you what Bill has written. So here is my story. My father passed away at 40 years of age, leaving behind my mother, a full-time housewife, and four children. Our mother always managed to have a Christmas for us. We realized that it was the hand of Jesus that helped my mother accomplish this. As a young man, there was a dark period in my life. I rediscovered my relationship with Jesus, and this has helped me through this time. I know that Jesus is there for me in any difficult times that I have. 
Thank you, Bill. I invite Lorraine Yeomans to come forward and to share her story with us now. I um, decided this week when I was thinking of where I was around to do that I would go back memory lane of my teenage years, living in that lane with my parents, my older brother, and two younger sisters. And it's all with my grandmother in the story, too. She did not live with us all. Has Jesus touched me? Yes, he has in many ways in my life. I hope it, I hope it continues. I will share with you a few of my feelings. Growing up in a Catholic family, we attended church every Sunday, along with my grandmother. We would go and pick her up and head to St. Anthony's Church in Centerville. My grandmother was a little woman, very kind, and cared very much for her family. She was a mother of four and a great wife. Most of all, she loved her church and believed in her faith. This is my father's mother I'm talking about. She lived less than five minutes from here. We would arrive at the church. My grandfather led the way to our pew. And it always was the same thing. We received communion weekly, listened to hymns, and followed Father Agnew during the service. What made me feel touched by Jesus was the sun was shining through the windows as it is here today. My grandfather was in his final rest of the place just outside the church in the graveyard. My family followed us. Same time, we're worshiping together in Jesus' house, the house of the Lord, that we call our church. My parents and my grandmother were proud of us all, and we must remember one of the Ten Commandments that is honored by the Holy God. Here I am today, holding Jesus close to my open heart and following my faith. When I hear the ringing of the church bells, that means come to worship with new people. When I hear the sounds of the organ playing and the choir singing, it fills the air with joy and peace. Listening to Barbara's sermon, listening to Barbara's service, her sermon and her prayers, and even the most of all to my heart, keeps me going through the day and moves the body. So I feel like I've been touched by Jesus in so many ways and continue to follow my faith and hope and attend the church to pray with the other hand. Thank you, Lauren. Thank you. I share with you now what Val Green has, has sent me to share with you. I had some specific thoughts on how Jesus has touched my life during the Christmas season. I love Christmas. But not all my Christmases have been happy ones. And this is probably true of, of most of us. My first hard Christmas came when I was 10 years old. My parents had separated, and there was much strife between them. I remember my father coming to the door with gifts for us, and he and my mother got into a terrible fight. And she would not let him see my five younger sisters and me. We were so torn because we loved them both. As Christmas drew near, my mother became more and more upset because she did not know how she would provide a Christmas for us. On Christmas Eve, there was a knock at the door. Someone had put, on, put us on the Salvation Army Christmas basket list. They came in with wrapped gifts and a bushel basket containing everything we needed for Christmas dinner. My mother cried. My sisters and I were amazed. We felt the touch of Jesus during that dark time through the kindness of strangers. Gifts are always nice, but it did not really matter what was in them. It was the kindness that meant so much to us. May those gifts that we brought today to share with others have some similar impact. She goes on to say, Christmas of 2003 was a hard one. My father died on November the 26th. Five days after his death, we were told their mother was terminally ill with cancer. I attended the longest night service at our church. I was heartbroken. 
Our minister said that the grief we feel when we lose someone is the price of love. I knew it immediately to be true, and I knew as hard as it was to go through that kind of grief, that ultimately it was worth it. We can avoid it if we never loved anyone deeply, but what kind of life would that be? I felt the touch of Christ that night, and through the tears felt the profound gratefulness that I had been given the gift of being my father's daughter. I felt com comforted, and I knew that comfort came from Christ through the words of our minister. The following Christmas in 2004 was also difficult. My mother was admitted to palliative care, the unit of the Stratford General Hospital. My sisters and I gathered at the hospital. We knew her time would be soon, but we did not know exactly when. She finally passed on the 5th of January, 2005. Through that time, the staff of the palliative care unit were so kind to us. The hospital chaplain was a frequent visitor to her hospital room. I am sure that all these people would normally be kind, but it seemed to me that the Christmas season seemed to bring out kindness in others even more. I felt the touch of Christ again through the kindness of others. It was the little things, the offer of a cup of coffee, a warm hand on the sh shoulder, a caring word. I was raised in the church and first came to know Jesus as a child. I have felt his touch many times, often through the kindness of others. And I still love Christmas. Val. Thank you, Val. In 1998, I left home to head to Cape Britain to begin my first half of my internship. It would end at the end of December. My sister rode with me and we took our time enjoying the, the scenery on the way to Cape Britain. I arrived early and got set up and established, found my place to live, and, but I knew that I wouldn't be home for Christmas, and that would be the first time ever. But just days after I arrived, my supervisor said, why don't you start your internship a little early since, since you're here? And that way, you can maybe make it home for Christmas. I did. I was asked to preach the blue Christmas service that they had annually there. And after thinking about it for some time, I referred to the song I'll be home for Christmas, if only in my dreams. I think that song has stuck with me because of, of being away. I talked about how loss makes us remember the memories through our dreams, through our thoughts, through the thoughts of, of our loved ones, and how all being home for Christmas sounds really good, and then there's that next line, if only in my dreams. And maybe sometimes only in our dreams is the best way to be home. Maybe going home can, can be painful for many. The reality of it all is just too painful. So recalling it in our dreams, the, the pleasant memories, the warm, those warm feelings, is truly, is truly the, the best gift. This year, I didn't make it home for Christmas. My mother flew down and she drove home and we made it home in time for Christmas. And it was extra special that year because I'd been away and I, I felt that coming home. And I was fortunate, remember thinking, I will be home for Christmas. So this year, for the first time I believe in my life and my dad's life, he, he was raised on the, on the farm where I grew up and uh, my sister lives there now. So the first time in his life, and probably in mine, we will not be home for Christmas. So my dreams of being home for Christmas will be extra special this year. And for Doug's family too, as we usually gather on Boxing Day. For many of you as well, as the virus has altered many of our traditional and, and tentative plans, 
Christmas will be different. So this Christmas, my prayer is that we will all feel God's touch upon us as this Christmas will be different for many or all of us. That doesn't mean it cannot be special and that it cannot be blessed and maybe we'll find new meaning and welcome feeding for our souls in our different situations this year. Our hearts must be open to what God has in store for us. And we can trust that he will guide us and see us through. We can be certain that we'll, we'll be touched in some way. And may we continue to touch the lives of others through our faith and through our response of our faith. I want to end with a, a story contributed by Bruce Howell, A Mother's Touch. A wounded soldier returned from Vietnam. He was in critical condition. He was blind, his mind was clouded, his body was mangled. His mother traveled over 2,000 miles to be by his bedside. As soon as she entered the hospital room, she laid her hands on his brow without saying a word. Instantly, he said, Mother, is that you? It must be you. She hadn't spoken, but he knew the tender touch of her hand. That's the way it is with God. We can't see him, yet we, we, we feel his touch upon our lives in so many different ways. We speak to him, but receive no audible answer. And yet we leave his presence calmed and consoled as a child. God's touch came to earth as an infant who became a human, human being just like us. The touch of those who opposed him put a very firm embrace upon him, nailing, to, nailing him to a cross. But even death could not keep a full, full, firm hold on him, and he rose from the grip of death. His light, his, his resurrection, darkening the, the evil and darkness away, bringing the light of his reassuring, loving, caring touch into our lives. I know that if you look over your shoulder, you will see his hand upon you reassuring you and me that we will be okay. Changes are always difficult, but we do not face them alone. This Christmas may be the opportunity to touch the lives of others and be touched again in some special way by God's Spirit. May our hearts and lives be open. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our next hymn is He Touched Me, and the words are on the screen.
this Sunday in Advent celebrates God's gift of peace. When we look around the world, we see so many places where peace is missing. There is conflict, there is anxiety, life seems threatening. But because we know the gift of God's peace, we live in hope that our gifts will help restore peace to souls and situations by the power of the Spirit. We have the privilege now to share of our lives. Our offering will now be received. God of promise, we bring you our gifts in Jesus' name. For we know his peace through the forgiveness, through forgiveness and faithfulness. Receive our offerings and bless our gifts and our lives. Help us share the peace you offer us with our neighbors throughout the world you love. In Christ we pray. Amen. Let us pray. God of wisdom and patience, in this season of Advent, we wait for your gifts of hope and peace to claim the world once more. We wait on you in prayer, knowing you hear us even before we speak. Prepare our hearts and minds to welcome the coming of your Son once again. And prepare our courage and conviction to follow you. Thank you for leading us on the way, especially in these difficult times when the pandemic still threatens and people are so divided. We are grateful that we can rely on your strength and comfort when so much around us has become so uncertain. Comfort those who are troubled in mind or spirit as the days grow shorter. Strengthen the bodies and spirits of those who are tired or, or suffering or grieving. Embrace those who are living with loss and protect children and young people for whom the future seems confusing and unimaginable. God, who makes all things new, turn our lives upside down and shake out the unnecessary distractions of this season. Focus us on what is truly important and who truly matters to us. Turn our lives upside right so that our priorities and purposes match those we have learned from Jesus. Shape and reshape us until we conform to, to your way of living and your likeness. Turn us upside down, O oh God, so that we value what is hidden and small more than what is showy and grand. Open our eyes to the needs of the most vulnerable in our community and help us speak out with them and for them, even if we must challenge those who usually get their way. Turn us up right upside, right side up, oh God, so that we can see we have more than enough resources to share with those who have much less than they need day by day. We ask your blessing upon the food and gifts that have been brought in today for White Gift Sunday. May they bring hope and blessing to the lives of many other families who are in need and are losing hope. May they bring more hope and love to those who need them most. Hear us now as we name places and people and situations that need your tender care. We include Cheryl and Arissa and other families who may be grieving, going through a great time of, of difficulty and so much uncertainty of, of Christmas plans. We pray, O oh Lord, for your spirit to be upon us all. Lord God, you are Alpha and Omega, our beginning and our end. Strengthen us with your spirit to build your kingdom here and now, now and always. 
Hear us now as we pray together the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. To finish our service, Christmas Carol, number 62 in your voices united, once in Royal David City, 62. Way in a main. Okay. Will you come again and we'll sing it next time? I invite you to stay.
We go forth into this new day, this new week. May the grace of God uphold you, the peace of God surround you, the love of God flow from you, the strength of God protect you and keep you and those you love safe. And may the blessings of God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and upon you, now and forevermore. Amen.